What is going on my friends? Today I'm going to break down these Bells of Steel cable towers. I did a home gym tour video recently and a few people asked me to break down this particular piece in a little bit more details and I'm happy to do that. I don't have a ton of stuff in my home gym. You basically can see everything here. But this is one of my favorite pieces, so I'm gonna break it down. I just wanna break down the good, the bad, and the ugly. Luckily, there's not a whole lot of ugly when it comes to these, and spoiler alert, I absolutely love these. Probably my favorite piece that I have right now, but it's not all good, so I will be fair and show you what is a little bit not so great about these. So, let's get into it. So as you can see here, these pulley towers are attached to the back of my rack. I love that because I superset a ton and go back and forth between exercises. So you can see my bench here. I was doing incline bench on this side and then I was using cables on the other side. I love being able to go back and forth. So it's really great for me that it attaches to the rack and more so it adds so much stability to the rack. There's so much stability in the entire rack, this is all one piece now, and it's not gonna budge, so I love that. But anyway, getting to the specifics, I have the plate-loaded pulley tower. They have a weight-stacked version, which is obviously more expensive. If money's no object, I would go for that in a heartbeat. It's so much easier to change the weight, and obviously it's gonna be more commercial quality versus something that's plate-loaded. But this was much cheaper, 300 something, I'll have to check for each of them. I think close to 350 for each of them, so 700 bucks for both, which is cheaper than going with something like a functional trainer where everything's built into one. They're super smooth, which is not gonna translate to a video, but like, can you tell how smooth that is? Probably not, but they are very, very smooth. I had a different functional trainer before this for cables. It was from Valor and it was not super smooth, it would stick, and it just didn't feel like cables at the gym, whereas these actually do. Now, the cables themselves are different than what you would see in the gym. They're not commercial quality, they are a little bit cheaper, but they're so smooth and I can't tell the difference. And I really like that there are two different options on each tower. So you can essentially have four different attachments. The only downside is that the weight will have to be the same depending on what you are using. Because this attaches to the back of your rack, obviously this is only gonna be as wide as your rack is. So when I bought this, I was a little bit concerned that it wasn't gonna be wide enough for flies. But if you attach the handles, which it does come with these handles, to the outside hooks, it goes wide enough that you can do flies and get full extension because it's going to the outside. If you attach to the inside, it won't be as wide, and obviously if you're super tall or have a huge wingspan, it might be a little bit different. But that works out really well for me, which was something I was worried about. So put your mind at ease. You don't have to worry about it. And one of the reasons I wanted to go with these particular pulleys is because, first of all, I just love Bells of Steel as a company. I love their equipment. But these pulley towers were made with the same tubing size as their racks. So if you buy rack attachments like this dip bar, you can slide it in anywhere and use it just like you would a rack. So if you like doing supersetting like I do, this is amazing because I'll do sometimes five different exercises, get everything set up with the attachments and the cables and everything, and then run through a giant set with five different exercises. You can still use the cable, obviously, depending on what you're trying to do, and attach something like this. And because the holes go all the way through, I can even position this in the center here, so that way I can use the cables out on the front, which opens up so many possibilities. If you want, you can get J-hooks, which is basically just what you would use to rack the barbell onto, like you see behind me. And you can use this as a separate squat stand. And I've used these Bells of Steel lever arms forever. I have an entire video dedicated to these arms and breaking down what you can do with them. But it's another Bells of Steel attachment, which means you can slide it right in. And now I have basically a separate rack. 
to each their own. I know it's not for everybody, but I really like machines in the gym and this mimics a lot of them. So it's awesome being able to do stuff in the rack and then be able to come over here and do the lever arms with, without them getting in the way on the actual rack. So those are all the good things, but I should touch on a few of the bad things. The first pretty obvious one is with this one in particular, the weights, you have to change weights on four different pegs when you're doing something. So for example, these flies, this was a little bit heavier than I would like. So if I wanted to lower the weight, I currently have 25 pounds on all four pegs. I would have to take those plates off, throw on 10 pounds on each one. So that's going to add some time, especially when you're doing trial and error of trying to find the perfect weight for you because you might throw 10s on and find that that's not heavy enough and then throw an extra 5 on. You get used to it because you do the same exercises and you know what weight to start with, but in the beginning that can be a little bit time consuming and then obviously if you go with the weight stack it would be a very easy just change of the pin. One of the other things with this in particular is that the legs go horizontally across here. If I want to bring this bench all the way through, it becomes quite a hassle because you get stuck. Now obviously every bench is going to be a different size. This is a Bells of Steel bench, uh, an awesome one, but it's heavy. So getting it through, I have to kind of shimmy it and go one side and then the other side and then I can slide it. Not a huge deal, obviously something that I'm more than willing to work around, but depending on your preferences and your setup, it might not be ideal for you. Then again, a lot of people have a little bit more room than I do, so you can probably just go around the rack and not through. I'm a little bit limited on space in the corner here. A couple other not so great things. One is this. Slides down very easily, doesn't slide up nearly as easily. Unfortunately, you kind of have to get under it and push. I don't know what it is about it. Obviously, gravity is working in my favor here, but it sticks a little bit coming up. Now, all you have to do is get under it, and it's not an issue. And then it slides pretty easily. But I wish that it was a little bit easier, especially from a time standpoint to do this nice and quickly. I would love to be able to just kind of shift this back up. At the top here, the way these pulleys are aligned, which this seems to be an issue with most pulley towers, at least the last functional trainer I had, I had the same issue. When you go to the top hole setting, it hits the, I don't even know what these are called, the wheels at the top. So you can't use the highest setting. This is not going to be high enough for a full extension. As you can see here, I can reach above the pulleys. I would love for this to be able to go to the top. Obviously, height is an issue. It can't realistically go that high, and I understand that. But some kind of option to be able to do lat pulldowns would be awesome. I'm going to show you my little hack for setting those up in a second. But the fact that this doesn't go super high I feel like that could be improved. And then we have the same thing down low at the very bottom. But there is quite a bit of a gap at the bottom here. And I would love for the very bottom to have a hole where this could lock in. So those are really my only issues with this. To me, the good far outweighs the bad. The bad things are really just convenience. So if you want to spend more, you can definitely get the, the weight stack, or if you want to go with a different company or a different machine entirely, you can do a functional trainer with a lat pull down built in. Those get way expensive, you're talking thousands of dollars. So it depends on what's important to you. I do want to show you a few tricks though that I've learned to make the most of these, because a few of the things that I touched on on the negative side can actually be remedied uh, it took me a lot of trial and error to find these solutions, but they've changed everything. So let me show you a few. First up, I'm going to show you a lever arm hack that blew my mind. So like I mentioned, I have a video for lever arms breaking down all the different exercises I do with these. I think there was 35 exercises and I'm still learning that I can do more. But this hack is crazy, so check this out. Now the problem with lever arms is that because 
you're working kind of laterally, uh, the first few inches of your movement don't really have any resistance. So let's pretend I did a full setup and I wanted to do chest press. These first few inches, no matter how much weight I add on the side, they're not really going to have much resistance until I get about halfway and then the pushing is going to feel like there's resistance. We have the handles that came with these arms and all I'm going to do is hook it to where you usually put the plates on. And then obviously I'm going to make this nice and tight. Okay, so we got that. Now I'm going to lower this so it is, so it has resistance. And now from the very beginning, you're going to have resistance on this all the way through the motion and it's going to pull back via the pulleys. So you can easily change weight out and you can go much heavier. These are kind of small pegs on the end. You can fit, I think, three plates. Obviously, if you're using bumper plates, two. If you want to go heavy, you very well can, but there's resistance through this entire motion, which changes everything and makes this so versatile. But one other thing that's really, really cool about this, for a really long time, I wanted to find a way to do high rows. I really like the machines at the gym where you're rowing from up top and coming down. Attach just like that. And then suddenly you're pulling. This opens up so many possibilities because now it's pulling back. You can set up a dip station, whereas previously that's not something you could have done. So the fact that there's pulleys here and you can attach lever arms right on here is insane. I love this so much. I use this constantly. Now, for warning, if you buy these, you're going to spend a lot of time playing around trying to find new exercises, trying to find the right heights, everything. It's a little time consuming at first, but you get the hang of it. And then once you do, it's amazing. And I use these all the time. Since there's two pulleys here, it basically divides the weight in half. So essentially what that means is when I have the attachment here, I'm pulling half the weight that you see. This is basically pulling, you know, 25 pounds. That's not entirely true, it's not exact, but for all intents and purposes, we'll say that. If you want true one-to-one -one ratio, just clip these together. Very, very simple, truly that easy, and it doubles the weight. So now that's gonna be twice as heavy, and I can't pull that as easily. So if you wanna do something heavy, clip them together, it will be true weight reflected by what you're putting on here. And then if you want to do something like supersetting, which I do all the time, clip them together, do something heavy, and then separate them out and do something a little bit lighter. You're off to the races. One more quick hack for you. I don't know if I can call it a hack, but if you want to do lat pull downs, that bench is too high for this because the setting is not quite high enough. So if you sit on a bench, you're a little too close to get the full range of motion. I use my Titan leg press attachment. I just lay it down and that becomes my seat on the floor. I bought a five, a five eighths inch, because that's the whole size, a five eighths inch threaded rod. And it is two feet long. So a little bit longer than I wanted, but I'm not cutting stuff in my basement. I'm not handy. I'm just doing what I can. I went to the hardware store, got some bolts, and then on Amazon, I bought these really cheap thigh roller pads, foot pads, whatever you want to call them. And now I'm used to the height that I need. You might have to play with it to find exactly. Just slide it through. And then I got washers. Pop those on here. And then I tighten. And now suddenly I have a lat pull down that actually works really well. It took me a really long time to try to find a solution. Hopefully at some point, Bells of Steel will sell some kind of pad or full seat that you can attach for lat pull downs. But this works great. You just slide your legs through. And you're good to go. 
super, super easy. And you obviously don't have to use this Titan light press attachment. You can sit on just anything or the floor, but I find that when you sit on the floor, it's just a little bit too low. So having a few extra inches really helped. And if you want to add some more possibilities, get yourself a bar that has attachments on the ends. And that way you can attach to the entire thing here. And then you can use the whole thing. I will do pullovers with these. I've done shoulder press because I have a really small or a really short ceiling. I can't do standing shoulder press with a barbell because the plates end up hitting. And I can get full extension without hitting my ceiling. So if you have low ceiling, get yourself a bar like this. It's awesome. As I was cleaning up, totally forgot to mention, there is also a pull-up bar across the top that is awesome. It's so much better than the pull-up bar that's on my rack. It has really good knurling and it is just the perfect size. So it just opens up more possibilities for supersetting, which I can't say it enough is what I'm all about. A nice little bonus also adds stability, but a nice little bonus having an extra pull-up bar that you can do outside of your rack. So there you go. Those are the Bells of Steel pulley towers. If you have any specific questions, let me know. I really, really love these. I love that they're attached to my rack. Ultimately, if I could do everything over again, I would have a different rack. This one is an outdated Titan rack that they don't make anymore, so I can't buy attachments for it. If you are building your own home gym, I will link to a rack that you should probably just buy instead. Bells of Steel just released a new 3x3 rack, which is pretty standard for most companies. 3x3 is probably the, I'd say it's the most common rack size. Mine's 2x2, they don't make it anymore, but this, these towers can attach to any rack the way that they set it up, which is awesome. But I would buy a nicer rack, but anyway, if you have questions, let me know. And if there's anything else you want to see in my home gym, please let me know. I'm happy to make more videos like this if you find it helpful. I'm here to help. I love my home gym. I didn't think I was going to become a home gym person, and now here we are. I'm fully in it. So if I could help you see the light, move over to the home gym life, I am happy to help however I can. So let me know.